I'm searching for Japan's most hidden campsite. It is hidden somewhere within these mountains. Love the random countryside shrines. This one is a challenge to get to, but we're going in style. We have a brand new camper van that I have never used before. We'll do a quick tour later on, but for now, let's get on the road. On top of there being about 20 wrong turns that you can make at any point in this journey, there are also no guardrails, so you have to take it incredibly slow and carefully. I personally love driving these Japanese mountain roads. It is not for everybody though. Ooh, you can hear all the rubble and debris under the tires. I. <laughs> Let me stop here for a second and show you like the sheer drop off the side of the cliff. Let me give you a peek at it. And this actually isn't even one of the bad ones. Like, you at least have a bit of an edge here, but if you go down, you are going down quite a bit. And while they have all this fencing to stop falling rocks, there are still fallen rocks all over the road. Luckily, only about the last 30 minutes or so of the drive is like this, which means we are almost there. There are entire sections of the road that have just given way, so I'm not kidding when I say you have to be very cautious. And you know, come to think of it, I haven't done any proper camping in at least a year and a half. The last one was that rooftop camping in Tokyo, and I don't really think that one counts. I can't drive by the abandoned house and not stop in to check it out, so. What is the tunnel? Oh no! It doesn't look like it's super deep. These were often used for old houses like this as sort of a mine for minerals and stuff like that. We, let's go take a peek. Now we won't go too deep because we do run the risk of mukade, which can be somewhat dangerous, but it actually looks like it might go around the corner. And getting bit by one of those would be a quick and unfortunate way to end the trip, especially considering this entire mountain, including the campground, has zero cell service. Which is exactly the adventure I like. What? Let me see if I can turn on the light here. Seeing as we have a collapsed floor here, I don't entirely trust venturing too far inside, but let me give you a peek. You gotta watch out for all the glass here. And this. What we got. And the amount of wiring here would imply that at one point this place actually had power. You can see from the walls just how simply these places were built. There's also another one up the hill over there, but I've done entire documentaries living out in these abandoned villages and talking to the locals, and it's always such an amazing experience to hear the. Sorry, just trying not to fall to hear their stories and meet the people who once lived in these places. It's also just a ton of fun to try and track them down. But the campsite's just up the road and I'd love to get there before we lose light. Look at this, not even one other person. You know, just for good measure, let's take a peek at the other side. Yep, it looks like it is just me and the animals. And it wouldn't be our first time to come across a bear here in Japan. We'll come back and explore in a little bit. I wanna get set up before I lose light. Also, I still haven't checked out this camper van and I can guarantee you that I got way, that I got way too much food. D never shop when you're hungry. Just wait till you see how much stuff I got. Also, the awning is, the awning is in a bag. Well, this is different. When I saw this car from the outside, I wasn't sure if they sent the right car at first. Okay. We have legs. That need to be tied down, which is exactly why I always bring a giant bag of camping junk.
There we go. And when I finally actually looked inside the camper van, it was completely full of my junk. I was actually gonna show you how nice it is. Give me a second. Okay, I think that's better. Let me. It's actually really nice inside. It's got a battery and you can turn on the, I love the lights. It's all wood paneling inside. Still not sure if I'll fit. We'll have to check that in a minute, but it has storage for all your cooking supplies. And it has what I have very appropriately deemed the cooler of bad decisions. We'll, we'll check that in a second. I'm curious as to whether or not I even actually, I want to check if I fit in this thing. Let's, let's climb on in. Okay, shoes off, and I guess we'll... You know what? It looks... It looks like I fit. You know, I'm going to try and close the door here. Oh, 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 oh. oh, that was a close one. Genuinely not bad. And I haven't even moved the chairs forward. My, my feet just stick right in between. Also, what... Oh, oh it, there was like a really big, like, like hand-sized black butterfly. I hope that's not a bad omen. It also has a table and chairs. I completely forgot that I bought a new fireplace. So <laughs> opening this up to find plastic in an instructional manual was, was a shock for me. I used my last one to its very last breath. And with that, I am set up and ready to show you the cooler of poor decisions. All I ask is that you don't judge me too harshly. So first off, for some reason, I have placed a frying pan in there. I've got some coffee, a bottle of water that's half gone, some autofold. You'll see what we're doing with these later. You've probably figured it out by now, marshmallows. I got some Johnsonville cheese bratwurst, a steak, ham and mayonnaise, and egg salad. Let's call these snack and breakfast. What just might be the world's tiniest coffee? multiple types of salad and ooh, I forgot I got salt for the steak and I'm gonna roast up some meat on a stick I also have several giant bottles of water I am genuinely wondering how much of this I'm gonna be able to get through because I also brought two full boxes of snacks from our sponsor Tokyo Tree and Sakurako so this next section is going to be both sponsored and filled with snacks if you don't know them they're both subscription snack boxes that allow you to enjoy Japan from the comfort of your own home or I, I guess wherever you are with the biggest difference being that Tokyo Treat here focuses on pop and limited edition snacks from Japan like the ever famous Kit Kats and whatever this sour lemon gum is and always has a drink while Sakuroko partners with local Japanese snack makers to provide authentic Japanese snacks and teas as well as a beautiful piece of tableware every month this month is gorgeous the Tokyo Treat box has subugumi which are kind of like jelly beans and I love them Pokemon Halloween Choco Pie has my interest. And Sakurako has heart-shaped senbei, which just look adorable. Are really good. Now every month they have a theme. This month in Tokyo Treat is Halloween Snack Hall and Sakurako is Kyoto Crimson Leaves and they come with these beautiful books that outline everything that is in them and all the information that you would want to know. I can't stop with Tsubugumi. If you're interested in giving them a shot, you can use my links in the description box down below along with my code to give yourself $5 off of your first box. Now will be the end of our sponsored section. I'm gonna get some of this stuff into the cooler and let's go explore before it gets dark because it has clouded over. It's not even that late yet. It is just clouded over and gotten so much darker than it was earlier. Okay, I have a bit of a confession to make. This past summer was meant to be a summer of camping and hikes and road trip adventures, but I, <sighs> how can I put this? I did not handle the Japanese summer very well this year. Uh, okay, that's a, bit, it's a bit of an understatement. I completely and utterly tanked in the summer this year. The heat was just far too much for me. Also look at this entire area. It's beautiful, it's nice cool air. Right? It was nicer when the sky was blue, but let's take the upper path and head towards the bridge. I don't know if you can see this or not, but oh wow, that, that was fast. There are a ton of spider webs right here. Doesn't look like anybody has been through here in a while. 
And this bridge is so shaky. I had done an entire video over on Patreon apologizing since we're supposed to be planning an adventure across Japan over there. And everybody was very nice and understanding because of how crazy this year's summer was. But it makes me all the more happy to finally be out on this super shaky bridge out doing some camping. It's been too long. Also, speaking of nobody having been here in a while, I've been here before. I came here a couple years ago to do a camping video, but on top of the drive exhausting me on the way in and my camera not being up to the task of recording at night, I was actually, there's, sorry, there's spider webs on my hand. I was actually just a little bit afraid of this place the very first time that I ever came here. I guess it is a gorgeous space, but there was a typhoon set to roll through that night that would have done damage to the already very sketchy roads in the place with no signal and I didn't have my Garmin inReach there to keep me in touch if anything went wrong. So I was like, if anything goes wrong, I'm going to be stuck here. The typhoon didn't come through, but I just never ended up making a proper camping video about this place. Like when I say gorgeous space, I mean gorgeous space. I've come much more prepared this time. And there's a house up here, which is what I can only assume is for the caretaker of this campsite, which is a completely free campsite. I feel compelled to go up and say hello if they're there. I'm assuming that nobody's there, but I'm gonna go take a peek. Nobody. The place is really well maintained and there are fresh tire tracks coming through. That car looks like it hasn't moved in a long time. But my favorite part of this entire thing is right here. It says that there is a camera in operation written beautifully on chalkboard. And at least this time they, they have a phone number, which doesn't really do anything unless you happen to be carrying a landline with you. I'm, I'm starting to, I'm already starting to get hungry and it looks like there's some abandoned properties out this way. Got abandoned buildings and sheds and huts. There's an abandoned K truck over there. Also have this moderately steep hill to climb, but between the abandoned properties and the complete and utter lack of people, the peace and quiet, this campsite just might be the best that I have ever been to in Japan. You know, if you're not hung up on things like self-service and safety and all that. That hut isn't creepy at all. I was originally going to tent camp tonight and then my friends from Tokyo Camper Vans called me up and they were like, hey, we have this camper van that's designed by your buddy over at Dream Drive and I had to try it out. So that's how I ended up with the camper van today. And is it? Is it? I thought it was raining there for a second. It might be. It might be raining. Okay, you know what? Let's head back, get set up and start cooking just in case it starts coming down. Yep, it is, it's raining. Let's see if we can't get a fire started before all the wood gets wet. There we go, fire is going good. Now we're just waiting on coals so that we can eat. I've pushed it out either way. There's well over two meters between the fire and here. And it looks like we're just about there. So I'm going to pull it back and I'll place the grill over it. There we go. We're going to need the light at this point. There we go. And you know what? Let's just start with the meat. And I kind of want this salad. Almost completely forgot about these guys. In all fairness, half of this, like the salads and whatnot, it was for lunch, but okay, let's get cooking. I also, in my haste, did not realize there were 
There were support poles. So yeah, this is actually a pretty good awning. I was just in a rush and did not set it up properly, but I think we're ready to cook. And yes, I changed my shirt because I fully anticipate getting dirty while I cook. Those are like the perfect, perfect coals now. Okay. All right, good etiquette. The first thing that we're gonna cook here is the salad. It's right in a container. You just place that container right. I'm gonna start with these guys. I have scissors in my pocket and they cut a hole in my pocket, which is sad because these are my favorite travel pants. Norm, are you tired? <laughs> no, no, not at all. I'm completely fine and normal. Looking for some more blocks to add to the fire, but I, I can only find giant ones. We'll, we'll do that after. There are one, two, three, four, five. There are six of these in here. There's no way in the world that I'm getting through six. Let's let's start simple with two. Okay, you know, let, let's let's do three. It's all off to a great start. Oh wow, those are that that's completely stuck. Okay, we'll come back to you. Problem for future norm, let's get the frying pan heated up for the steak. Most of these guys down here look like they are, well, they're pretty close to done. And the steak is off to a bit of a suspicious start, but it'll be fine. Gonna give it a shot while it's still sizzling and hot and guaranteed to burn my mouth. Mm. That was hot. You know, honestly, ever since the borders opened up, everything just feels like it's been going so much faster. So honestly, just being able to sit down solo camp and have a nice meal. <laughs> Nice. Don't judge my steak cutting. I, I didn't bring a knife today, but I brought scissors. Also, why didn't any of you tell me that I was using the wrong side of my chopsticks? I'm sure you did. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure somebody got it in the comments before I noticed it, but yep, been using the wrong side of my chopsticks the, the entire time. Salad. Well, that meal went swimmingly. <laughs> And do you remember these? And these. Got the fire going again for a second. And the rain stopped, by the way. Literally just in time for you to <laughs> see nothing, because it's dark. I think I can kind of see some stars. All right, fire's just about right. It's an easy process. It is two of the chocolate cookie out of fold old things. One roasted marshmallow on the proper side of my chopsticks. And that is about as Japanese of a s'mores as I can make. Mm. Okay, I officially actually have a pro. I might have to set up a tent tonight. A suzumebachi, or Japanese killer hornet, literally just crawled into the edge of the. Oh. I, I did not need this tonight. There he goes. I would prefer it if you left. Now don't go into other... He's chasing the light. We'll give him this. You gotta love the irony. I come here all worried about bears and... and here, <laughs> here's a bee. <laughs> I, I think he's gone. Every other bug in the campsite is probably in here now, but I'm pretty sure he's gone. We'll test it out with this. But I hate to do it this way, but the only way I'm really gonna know is if I close myself in here and then if he's in here, I will hear him because he is loud. So far, so good. <laughs> this is it's gonna be a fun night of sleep. <laughs> There's another light here. I think we can close these up. What? Why is. Okay. With all the curtains closed up, it is not a bad little space in here at all. So I can hear the Suzumebachi outside. 
<laughs> he's just hanging out outside the door loud and aggressive, but at least he is outside, so we are good. Also, I have my own little panel here where I can adjust the lights or plug my phone in and and there are mist. I've been killing mosquitoes for the last 15. Yeah, a, <laughs> I pretty much guarantee I'll be waking up itchy tomorrow. And while I don't really have the vertical space in this camper, this actually feels pretty spacious. I'm just gonna be sleeping any. I just basically camped my way through the pandemic and since. <sighs> I missed that mosquito. The last year has just been insane. I did not realize how much I missed this. Like, I know we're still only in September, but as soon as that Halloween stuff comes out, I feel like we are in that final stretch and the crunch is on and the year is coming to an end and... Oh. But what about you? What do you feel that you didn't get to do enough of this year? What do you miss? Let me know. I'm gonna try to get myself set up for some sleep. Yes, I, I also forgot to bring pajamas. <laughs> Here we are. Thanks guys so much and I will see you again real soon. I, that did not play out the way. <laughs> there was still a light on right here. Also, I, I have got to know, would you stay here? Would you drive that road? Would you stay at this campsite? What, I did, let me know in the comments. Please let me know what you thought of this place. I absolutely love it. I have missed it. I am 100% coming back again. Thank you guys. And I'll see you soon. Yep, I just hit my head on the door. Okay, so one minor negative is coming out to this bathroom in the middle of the night. I just, please don't let there be any animals. Oh. There's a switch. Huh. It's at least a nice clean. It smells nice in here too. She smells like wood. Can we take a second and talk about the huntsman though? Just realized I never mentioned the campsite name. It would probably help if you want to go and check it out. It's called Nikenya. I'll write it in the description, but I'm not going to link it. I will leave the search up to you because that that's the adventure of this place. And I may have hidden something there. I didn't drop that. We're just going to keep filming and pretend that that didn't happen. Totally normal. Everything's fine. Thank you.